Hi everyone, we are back. It is Dave and Lee. It's, Hi guys. It's been a little while, been a couple weeks, but we've been busy. We have, we have. Um, good stuff though, good stuff. <laughs> um, so I guess, um, as we do as the, uh, on the top of the show, uh, what are we working on? Did you want to go first? I have a project! Yay! And it's a different project. Uh -huh. It is a different project. It's not an embroidery project. It's a knitting project. Ooh, I like it. Making a wrap that will hopefully be long enough. We've all played that game. Oh, yarn chicken. And I <laughs> with Miss Babs. I don't know if you can see that. Yep. It's the Miss Babs Eucalyptus colorway. Oh, that's really I cool. got it. I want to say three years ago. But it's this beautiful, subtle gradient of, like, seashell, blues, all the way to brown and pink. And I thought that it would be a nice, lightweight fingering wrap for, uh, you know, whatever L.A. winter is. That's really cool. I haven't... I keep seeing those, like, kind of projects. I haven't actually gotten one yet. Yeah, I've just been going through and shopping my stash, and I have these beautiful sets of colors... But it's so hard to figure out what to do with them because it's, I think, 700 odd yards. Right. 700 yards, which is great, but what do you do with that? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it kind of falls in between of a lot of the projects, you know? Like it's two pairs of socks or half a sweater or a scarf ish. I got two bags of it to make it be. Uh, 1600 yards okay. but i don't i didn't know what to do with it so i thought stripey beautiful wrap would work I, I like it i like it i feel like that's a good choice yeah so maybe i'll get sorry i said yeah no i, I hope it's a good choice it's the wheaton pattern by i don't know if it's by jared flood but it is jared flood's yarn lines pattern Excellent. and how much was like one set okay. it was 57 dollars okay. and uh, to this one i talk about ryan beck this year but the booth was so crowded and i was so excited about getting something that i just grabbed two knowing that it would be unlikely i would be able to get miss babs yarn in the future gotcha good planning you know it's just good planning for future me from three years ago planned ahead i'm very proud of louis from three years ago me too. She was she was nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think so. I mean, I've actually known you for that long, so yeah. I tend yep. To, tend to agree. So, I have been kind of jumping around a lot lately. Um, I'm still, like, right now I am actually have my blanket that I've been working on still. Working. I love yarn. How is it like to work with? It's good. Um, it is, you know, a uh, lighter yarn, so um, if you don't like that type of yarn, don't use it, but I'm still enjoying it, it's just I kind of finished one skein, um, a friend asked me to knit him one or two things, so I did that, which were, you know, kind of quick and easy, then another friend that I've been kind of talking to, um, actually wanted me to do something for a Christmas present originally, um, and design something for him, so, um, I actually put it on Instagram, but it's a little coaster with a little pentagram in it. It's double sided, so I'm pretty happy with how it came out. But we'll um, I have to talk to him to see if you, um, it's what he pictured in his mind. But um, if all else fails, if we end up, don't end up doing it, it was another exercise in pattern making. So I definitely always like an exercise. I need more practice with pattern making. So double knitting has been your jam recently it really has been i i've been liking it a lot but also i'm i think i don't know why i'm hanging my hat on how to pattern make with double-sided projects but i have been it's a lot to wrap your head around yeah and i feel like it's like i'm making it a lot harder on myself than if i just chose like one of the other you know, like, I could have just picked, like, double-sided knitting and, like, found projects and done that. Or, like, just started to do, pri like, make patterns and just done that. But no, no, no. 
no. I had to do both. Um, but that's so wonderful about you. You're like, I will do 150% of this. Yeah, yeah, but it's, I think, um, I think that's part of what's keeping me engaged is just, um, something new and double-sided is still relatively new for me even though I've done a couple things now um but also pattern making is still I'm doing more but that's also the challenge for me so I think that's what's kind of keeping me like I, I will always enjoy knitting I think but like it's keeping me kind of more intrigued and curious and challenging the right kind of challenge for me so, yeah. It's, it's a good uh, good new realm of craft for you, is the double knitting. Yes. Yes. I mean, I have my, I have my pattern making, you have your spinning, so. Uh, I'll be working on the spinning more this winter. It will happen. I know. I'm looking forward to you spinning for me. Like It's what I want to do. It will solve my minimalist goal of getting this fiber out of here. And your goal of getting awesome yarn and care packages. Exactly. It's a win-win. It's a win-win. It is. They start working on it. Yeah. It will happen. Calling my name. I'm going to ask. Maybe. Say again? Maybe tonight. Okay. I'm going to ask you every week until I start getting packages. I, that's the only reasonable way to get me to do anything. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> so another thing that um, transpired since the last time I talked to you, you went to... A yarn show. I did. I went to Rhinebeck. And uh, Tell me more. It has become a big festival, and I would say too big. Yeah. And I'm happy with success. And I've been going to Rhinebeck for the past six years now. So this is my sixth Rhinebeck. Okay. And it was just a different experience. I first went to Rhinebeck because it was a small festival in upstate New York where I could see the leaves and be in a cute little idyllic town. And the thing that impressed me the most with Rhinebeck was how polite and genuinely kind the other knitters were. And you could stop and admire someone's shawl or scarf. And, you know, if you were in a booth, I mean, they have these booths and you would go and you'd wait in line patiently. And, you know, you'd grab your yarn to pay and no one would think to steal things or anything else. And this year, Rhinebeck was just insane. It was probably twice the amount of people that are typically there. Really? It was capacity. The barns were crowded, women were bumping into each other, and just very aggressive in the booths. Mm -hmm. And I actually only stayed for 45 minutes. Really? And it's yeah, a... Yeah, so it's blue cross-country four, but I still made a really fun experience of going to local wineries. Okay. And there was an apple picking area we went to, and a lovely restaurant, and I got to see you in person. Yes. And all of our friends. It was lovely. Yes. And we'll have it again many more times. Of but. I would say that the festival has turned into something. It's just like other big festivals, like Burning Man, and you know they used to start as something small and cool and fun, and more people hear about them, and then it becomes a very different thing. And that that feeling that you have to escape, uh, gotcha. you know, large, something fun becomes taken over by large crowds. Right now, do you think it would do better in a larger venue? Like if they did somewhere, like if they moved, do you think it would be better? I think that it would have been more effective if they had crowd control of monitoring how many people could go into the barn at once. Gotcha. And people would line before they went into a very cramped space. Gotcha. So wing line management system would actually have eliminated all of the issues because they were allowing as many people as wanted into the barn. Gotcha. So a booth with eight by eight could have 20 people clamoring to get in. Gotcha. Okay. So maybe this was their first year of being, like, bustling, so they didn't know what to do with it. Yeah, they got cool and didn't know what to do with it, which I imagine would happen to all of us, but right. it, it was just a different vibe. Gotcha, okay. Now, would you go back in a couple years, or would you ever go back? Maybe, but I think I'm going to give other smaller fiber festivals a chance. I know there are a lot of arts festivals in, like, Taos, New Mexico. That's something I want to hit up. Okay. But I think it's... Time to check out other fiber and arts related festivals to see what they're like. Okay. That's what we should do. We should just start meeting at different places and touring different festivals. Yep. Yep. Oh, that would be so much fun. All right. 
Um, I think that's going to wrap it up for this week. Um, and we will talk to you and see you guys later next week. Bye, guys.